Welcome to the video tutorial for hollow paint. I'll be showing you some of the, the best methods to uh, capture holograms with hollow paint. Now, this version of hollow paint I'm using now is 1.0.1 .1, and it will be available soon in the App Store. And as you can see, I've already typed in the text cool. Um, I've got some settings set to where I like them, but I'll just go through them so that you have a, a full understanding of what they do. Now depth basically affects the depth of the 3D text. So if I have this de depth set to its maximum setting of 95%, I'll just begin the animation and show you what it looks like, it'll take up the entire iPad screen. That's the, cr that's the depth of the letter. Now if I bring the depth down to say 50 you can see the difference it makes. It only takes up 50% of the iPad screen. So that's what depth does. If you want to create 2D text, holographic text, set the depth at zero. I like my depth to be around 50, but anywhere is fine really. It's your preference. Now angle, angle as you can see here, it affects the amount of letter you can see above the front of the, uh, of the letter. So you've got the face of the text and angle basically affects how much you can see above it. Now frame speed, um, it affects how fast the animation will play and you will usually want that set to 50 frames per second because at a frame speed of about 50 frames per second and a smoothness of about 100% the, the very short word of cool takes uh, 9.5 seconds to, um, to, to run so when you bring the frame speed down to so you see as I'm lowering that the length of the animation gets longer so that's basically why you want to have it set at 50 at its maximum now color that's obviously just the color of the text and that's fairly straightforward and same with font it's just the font of the text. And I'll set it back to what I had it. Except I can't remember. No, there it is. Now, smoothness is how smooth the letters will appear, the curves on the letters. Um, the smoother they are, the longer the animation. So as I increase the smoothness like that, the length of the animation increases and obviously vice versa, I, I bring the smoothness down, it shortens. Basically what that does with a, a low smoothness like that, it really creates very uh, jaggedy looking text. That's, that's obviously uh, run very quickly. So I like it set at around 100%. But if you need to bring down the length of your exposure, I suggest bringing the smoothness of the letters down. See, it's much slower. Now height affects the, just basically the height of the text, uh, how much of the iPad screen the letters will take up. So for instance, at 100%, the letters will take up the entire height of the iPad screen as you can see there. But if I bring the height down they'll take up less and less space on that screen. So as you can see it's only taking half of that. Now repeat count is how many times the animation shall run. So if I set it at 1 
when the animation completes the first time, as you'd say, that's the letter C, O, O, L, and the apostrophe. See, and when that's finished, it won't run again, and you can return to menu. But if you want it to keep going for, to ma for making a stop motion video, you might want to set it at, say, four, as you can see there. And what that does is when the animation completes, it'll run again another th three times. So that's the end of the first one. And then wait for the delay, which I'll explain in a second. And the next animation begins. Now that delay is there so that you have enough time to get back into position and repaint your text. Now that would continue to go through another two times after that. And the repeat delay is what I just explained then. It's how long in between those repeated animations. Now if I set that to zero, you can see... Now if I set... Now the repeat delay is what I just explained. It's basically how long in between the, uh, the repeated animations. So when I set it to zero, you'll see that after the animation is run through the first time, it's the O, the L, it will continue to go through again straight away up to zero seconds. So there it is again, starting straight away. But you'd obviously want to set that a bit higher than zero something around maybe 10 seconds, just enough to get back into position for your stop motion video. Over the next page, you can see there's the countdown time. Now this affects how long after you press the top here to when it starts drawing. See, that's a 10 second countdown. And that can be helpful because a lot of cameras uh, default time is a set to 10 seconds and it can just help you time your shots which is what I'll be setting it at in this video um, sound is, is an audio cue when I'll just turn the sound up here when the animation begins the sound, a beep will go and when it ends another beep will go just to signify that that's the end and beginning of the animation. That's just to warn you that you should start moving across the image like that. And when it finishes, another beep. So, pretty simple. Now, this is my basic setup here. I've got my camera here. And what I'll be doing, I'll be holding my iPad down the stairs there and I'll be dragging across the image like that to form my hologram. But uh, I'll just show you, the set, show you the settings I'm going to be using on my camera for this particular hologram. So I'm going to look at that again. It's cool. As you can see, 9.2 seconds long. So I'll be wanting an exposure of about 10 seconds. And if you look, also I'll have my countdown time set to 10 seconds. Now it's important and I'll show you that in a sec. So on my camera, now as you can see I've got this set to 10 seconds here uh, with the lowest F number I possibly can for this particular lens. I've got set to my camera set to ISO 100. Now you might want that to be um, uh, a little higher, say at ISO 200 or 400, but I like it at around 100 when it gets really dark and you see the holograms really clearly. The drive mode that I'll be using is a 10 second self timer. Now that's why I set the countdown timer in hollow paint to 10 seconds so that when I zoom out here, I'll show you what I'll be doing is I'll be putting my thumb on here 
just to ready the the uh, hologram and I'll have my other finger on the trigger on the shutter button for the camera and basically I'll release my thumb on hollow pane here and when the other screen comes across I'll press this button over here and I'll show you just how well that matches up with the timing so lift the thumb off that screens across press the button on the camera now you can hear my camera beeping there and you'll hear it when it starts to take the picture now it's probably a bit too late on the camera as you can see but it will fit the entire animation in it's finished there camera finishes and that's basically how I time my shots. Now the other thing I should mention is uh, it's important to pre-focus your camera where your iPad is going to be. So in this particular shot I'm going to be um, moving my iPad just a bit above that post there. So what I do, I would focus with this camera onto that post so that I'm ready with my focus uh, to capture the hologram in, po in focus because what you really want, you want to get the iPad screen in focus. Now that it's dark I can, can now that it's dark I can show you exactly how I make the holograms with holo paint. So as you can see I got the app here and with all the settings I had before with a countdown of time of 10 seconds. And the camera, my DSLR is also set for a countdown of 10 seconds. So what I'll do, I'll put my thumb on the big button there and on my camera's shutter release and I'll release them both at about the same time like that and I move into position. When I hear the beep, I start moving. I hear the beep, I stop. Camera's finished. And the pitch is ready. So that's basically how to create holograms with Holopaint. Experiment with different settings, depth, angle, smoothness, height, font and just see which ones you like the best.